Hi, Cassie. All right, I'm going to do your 15-minute um, psychic wisdom service now. So you would like some career guidance. You've been having some a lifelong um, struggle with depression. And so this year I turned 31, and I still have no idea what I should be doing with my life. Um, last reading, you mentioned that I have eight guides here to help me. Can they please give me some career direction? I really feel like for 30 years I've been in a massive fog and I'm just now realizing I need to get my ass in gear. <laughs> I'd really love some nudging in the right direction. Awesome. That was a really fun reading too. I really liked it. It was really exciting. All right, I'm going to relax and then we'll see what happens here, okay? So I'm I'm uh, eyes and I'm looking off into the distance. There's something of I'm actually in a painting or I'm looking into the painting itself. There are different colors or streaks of colors in the sky. I see red. The red gets more vibrant over the grays. It's like oil painting. I really like because you can see sort of a ribboning um, in the way that the color the paint was placed on the there's sort of like a texture to it and so while it's as if I'm sort of in a sort of a grayer scene you know there's sort of a grayer sky I'm also looking at it from the outside and it sort of looks like an oil painting and the sky has literally got some streaks of red and then gray and the red gets more and more vibrant the red brings more life or more light, more color, a more splash of color to the gray. It brings more heart to the grayer strands of color. It transforms the feeling of the horizon from what feels like a gray horizon to it's got more color, more heart, more hope, more I mean, there's nothing, this red color is quite delightful for me. <laughs> it's rich. It's a rich red color. And I love how it's glowing and growing. Sort of like you can look at the sky and there's sometimes it's just the perfect, it's just random crazy pink color or orange or colors of pink and orange and purple. And it just seems really almost it's just intense right this red is just it's surreal it's like it's gorgeous it's beautiful it's I'm mesmerized by it I want more of it I want more red they're saying don't be ashamed to want more love in your life don't feel don't feel shy about that don't feel shy to really open your heart up and allow the the reds the love color the the passion to enter into your heart it doesn't have to be romantic passion it's just heart it's passion about life itself like with your career for instance it's sort of it's kind of a bummer here because I really enjoyed the sort of oil painting scene and the vibrant red and the energy of love entering your heart and now quickly shift to sitting down and it's sort of like that kind of experience where I'm on the computer and I'm looking at job ads and I'm thinking about resumes and you know you know, presenting myself before management in order to get a job. <laughs> the reality is I just want a job because I need money in order to make my payments every month. <laughs> I don't care what the job is. I just need the money. Just hire me. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm awesome. <laughs> That's all you want it to be like, but it never is. It's intimidating. You got to, I mean, you're trying to impress somebody. You don't know what they're looking for. It just... But the, so those kind of feelings going on here, it's like the humdrum um, job search experience, resume writing experience. That Where'd the heart go? Where'd the happy go? Where'd the awesome go? It went um, right down the toilet. <laughs> That's just the point. That is the point. We're talking about you experiencing a fog in life. The fog is starting to lift or, or dissipate as you start to experience more heart, more vibrancy in your life. So the vibrancy is entering into your heart. You're starting to feel that magnetizing experience. But now you're asking questions about your life purpose, right? 
When we ask God, what is my life purpose? He doesn't say, okay, well, let's go pull out the careers and, and then we'll just see, okay, your life purpose is to be, you know, a paper pusher. <laughs> like, I mean, there's something to this. It's like, we ask God, what is our life purpose? Well, you're going to be a janitor. I mean, I don't know what it is, but, you know, most people want something a little bit, you know, there's nothing wrong with janitorial work, though, because some of us do like to just be on our own time schedule. I don't really have an issue cleaning toilets. I'm not really bothered by that, and it's easy work. It's consistent work, and I get to kind of do it at my own pace on my own time. There's benefits to being a janitor, but usually when we ask God for something, we think about the highest you know, potential, and most go jobs are... You're going to be on the other end of um, a phone call, uh, email, um, that sort of thing. And, and that's not usually sort of, what, is my, what am I meant to do in life? You're meant to be a collector. You're meant to call people, tell them they owe you money, and listen to them yell at you, saying, I'm sorry, you also have to pay your $35 late fee. And your interest rate also went up because you went 30 days past due. <laughs> I was a collector. <laughs> I did collections for five years. Was that my life's purpose? Yes, it actually was. I learned a lot about customer service. I learned a lot about life experiences that people have. I learned a lot about the financial industry. I learned a lot about about people who have a really good, who have it all, and then life happens and they lose everything, and now they have to figure out how to pay their bills. They have no choice now; they have to file bankruptcy. So I also worked with bankrupt accounts too. So is that my life's purpose? Yeah, because it, it had to mold me into, it mold and develop certain skills in me. A patience, a appreciation, a, you know, there's something to it, you know? So. So there's just a pause right now. There's a pause for contemplation. <laughs> Um, this is interesting. I'm hearing a child's voice and there's a pencil and a paper and really big, like the, there's notebook lines. And instead of just writing on the one thin line, we're using up two and then we're making spaces and it says, dear Santa on it. It's, it's a total like, dear Santa for Christmas, I would like this. There's something in this conversation here. It's like, dear Santa, dear heaven, dear spirit guides, dear, I mean, whoever you want, Jesus, dear, whoever you want it to be. But it's, it has to do with connecting with a higher being that understands you and knows what your needs are and can give you this gift that is exactly aligned with you spiritually. They keep emphasizing you can, you can continue to look at the grayer streaks of life, or you can really explore what, your, what is in your heart. There's something to this, because they're not just coming out and saying, well, this is what you're going to be good at. They're really wanting you to explore your heart. Uh -huh. Okay, they show me eight. What is coins <laughs> eight coins that make a smiley face and they're golden and they they're talking about that last experience last psychic wisdom service about you know remember where you come from you come from the super happy so you come from the smiley face land <laughs> when you're not coming from the smiley face land then you're not being who and what you're meant to be what what is what and who are you you're the smiley face you're the super happy there's something to this what am i meant to do with my life you're meant to be the super happy <laughs> you're meant to smile so whatever makes you feel gray you're in the wrong spot you need to be in the in the red zone and this in the red zone happens to be about passion and love and inspiration and motivation. They're showing me coins because when we think about what we are meant to do with our lives, we always think about how much money we can make. And we always put money as the emphasis that creates the smile. So that money is now the happiness and not actually the joy of the job. 
they say you need to you need to take the coins off the table and now you have an empty table and that feels very uncomfortable we got to have at least some coins on the table that's how that's what you're you're looking at an empty green table basically it literally the table is got it's a wooden table painted green that's funny because what's the color of money it's green but when the coins are off the table you know when you're not thinking about the influence of money it's like but i have to have money i can't just not have money so in my case, I, I too, you know, I have to have money, right? So I too work, worked a job. I worked in collections. And then I too also tried to explore, well, who am I? What is my higher purpose? Because the spiritual side of me is there for a reason. And I need to bring that out more because it, I'm feeling miserable holding it inside. And I'm actually feeling depressed because I'm not sharing myself. But I'm also living in a world that doesn't really have open arms to the kind of weird spiritual type of person that I am. <laughs> and so how do I connect beyond this, right? I have to do something. So then I created a website. I did writing when I had time. I also have three kids. So I'm juggling full-time job, parenting, and then creating my own website. So I was getting up early hours. I was living off of coffee. I was exhausted all the time, I, you know? And so sometimes, but here I am now, right? So sometimes... You have to think about hobbies too. So, you know, in order to get from point A to point B, you know, what makes you smile are the things that, that are a reflection of who and what you are, your identity, you know? What makes you happy? Like, really, ask yourself, what actually does make me happy? Well, I guess in my free time, I kind of like painting, but I'm not that awesome at it. So, I mean, it's kind of pointless for me to think I could make a living painting. But why, I mean, I mean, there's something to that, because we all do stuff like this. We're like, well, I'm kind of, not that, I mean, I like to play poker, but I mean, I can't really make a living off of playing poker, because I'm only kind of good, and so sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. I can't really, that's not really feasible, and, but you got to go deeper, you know what I mean? You got to really go deep, because for me, it's like, well, I have the spiritual side, but what can I actually do with that? I mean... I wasn't, I wasn't aware of what I was actually capable of. I had to discover what I was where, what I was capable of through dabbling in it, you know? And then you start to bring out the, the bacon in, within you from exploring it more from different angles and giving it a try. Can't stand public speaking, <laughs> but here I'm making YouTube videos. You, got, you, you don't know who you truly are until you actually take steps out there and try to put yourself, you know, sometimes the steps you, you take will put you into very vulnerable situations, but it does bring out the best of you, best in you in the end. You really do um, discover who you are. So again, we're just waiting here. There's a pause. <laughs> pause for contemplation. But this time it feels a little bit different because we're no longer at the green table. We've moved our chair out and we have sort of a, a satchel type of bag hanging over the shoulder and then we're walking um, on a sidewalk. It kind of looks like a school campus kind of location. I mean, I feel like a student even. I feel like... I've got a notebook and pens and paper in here and books. I mean, it's kind of an old school feel. There's even the funny resemblance of a Girl Scout. I mean, there's a feeling of I'm a college student. I'm living in a college town kind of thing. I'm new to, the, to all of this, to the bigger world out there. But as I'm looking at the person carrying the satchel, it's literally like a, the a, maybe a nine-year-old Girl Scout selling Girl Scout cookies kind of thing. And there's dreaming involved. There's real dreaming involved and experiences of feelings within the heart. Really thinking about things. You had said something about that. Don't you don't you haven't really spent a lot of time daydreaming about the future.
but that's a big part of how you discover yourself. There's a relaxed sensation taking place here as I'm watching Girl Scout walking through college campus as though she is um, in college. But there's a, a feeling of it's a big wide world kind of feeling. I'm just getting started in a big wide world. But there's more of a, there's the academic um, energy involved, but there's also kind of that exciting experience you have, you know, I'm get my college degree, I'm going to get an awesome job and make big bucks and I pay off my college loan. And, you know, so there's kind of a hopeful sen sensation that comes into the heart. I mean, and so that too is a part of the scene as well. But there's an academic sensation of this is a scholarly sensation and the sensation of, you know, excitement to enter into the real world, you know, professional business world to really make an impression on people, to really show people what I can do. But it never comes to that. Um, it, it's sort of on a teeter totter um, and it never comes to that. It only starts to go back and forth like this. There is no college campus. There is no, there's just a lonely girl who doesn't really know who she is going through the ups and downs of life, waiting for the spark of, of real life excitement to influence her, her direction, wondering what that is or what that could be. What if you took all the jobs off of the table, all the corporate career-based type of directions you could go? What if you started exploring becoming a spiritual channeler? And I'm literally asking you that question. What if you started to, to explore as a career, like me, being a spiritual channeler? How would you begin to do that? You begin by practicing. You begin by believing in yourself. You begin by exploring what that means to you. Exploring how that feels in your heart. Exploring if you would enjoy that or not. And exploring the feeling of helping other people that you don't know. Influencing other people's lives. Um, having a higher awareness. A deeper connection with spirit. Understanding your soul more. Understanding the, the earth experience. And, and it, reincarnation. And the, I mean that starts to open a doorway that takes you into a completely new realm of experience over let's uh, pull up the old um, careers list and then read and then see what team I can join and then hopefully they like my resume and I can get good pay there's something about this have you actually ever considered that and if you sat down and gave it a thought would you be like yeah that's not going to happen for me then we need to put the coins back on the table and then you need to go find a job out in the real world um that's what they're saying you actually have to explore who and what you are you have to explore go deep and and decide you you may say you know there's something to that maybe i could just start it as a hobby i'll just get a job that helps me you know pay the bills but um in my spare time i'll i'll start learning how to do this and exploring it and start building a business that i could actually enter into and then do and then be myself be me and share me with the world in a way that impacts others and makes others smile because that is what i do that is where I come from. I come from the smiley town. <laughs> I come from the happiest place on earth. <laughs> that is what it's like. Your spiritual home is like the super happy. I've never experienced anything so high in vibration. Like like the squealy happiest um, sound I've ever heard. That's what it's like. That's what you're like. <laughs> so that's what spirit has to share. So there's just a relaxed sensation here. They're just they're showing me a game of chess taking place. Don't play the game against your spirit guides. Allow them to teach you the right moves. Allow them to show you the the right moves. How do you know how to allow them to show you? You follow your heart as best you know how, and then you're always going to go in the right direction. Because you're going to just trust. 
And part of life is experiencing. And that's okay too. I didn't quite enjoy collections, but it was valuable experience, you know? You learn a lot that way. But it, was it what I was meant to do in life? Yes, but also no, you know? But it builds character, right? <laughs> All right, I have to um, close on this. So thank you very much for connecting with me again. It's really fun to help you. It's really fun to um, experience this wisdom for you. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us could find this wisdom useful. It was really good. Good question, good exploration. All right, so that's all I can share. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in um, experiencing psychic wisdom or spiritual healing with me, please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.